So you have been using Notion for some time already, but you are wondering how to make your experience even better with the app. Let me share with you five tips that are going to help you improve your quality of life using Notion. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel. In my past, I was an engineer, but now I'm the founder of the Notion Academy. And on this channel, we use Notion and other tools and strategies to free up our time and to gain control of our lives. So tip number one will be to use the Save to Notion Chrome extension. I prefer this extension so much more than the official one, and let me explain why. This extension adds an extra step in between the capturing and the putting data into Notion. And in this extra step, we can add different metadata or even automatically fulfill some of that metadata. And it's very easy to set up. Here, I have the Save to Notion already installed, and we can create a new form and select the database that we want to input our data. In this case, it's gonna be in my media vault. And here we can see all the properties that this database has. So for example, if we are always saving articles, we can add the new field for the source and select article. So every time that we are going to be using this form, this is going to be tagged as, as an article. And we can also add a status or whatever we have in the database and tag it as to read. We will just save it. And here we have it. So now when we are reading an article that we find interesting, we can just select this new form and these two are automatically fulfilled and we will just save it to Notion. Now, as you can see, I have different forms. One is for tasks. This I use to input tasks into my system. The other one that I use is this YouTube videos form that I use just to input new ideas into my YouTube content creation system. And you can see it's tagged by idea phase. Next one is for internet tools. So whenever I come across some internet tool that I wanna save, I have this form that I can write a short description and I'm gonna input that tool into my system. And the last one is for my books. Whenever I come across in Amazon, for example, a book that I want to buy in the future, I will use this form, select which is the topic of the book and just save it to Notion. So as you can see, this will save you tons of time to categorize all the metadata for everything that you input in your Notion system. The second tip will be to use a backlog. This is going to be a page in which we are going to be storing all of our core databases. And by core databases, I mean those that are not linked databases. So why do I find this useful? Well, it is much more secure to always use linked databases because if we accidentally delete them, we will not lose any of our data. But if we delete a core database, we will lose everything. So I prefer not to touch them at all. The second reason why I think it's useful to use a backlog is, let's go to my backlog. We cannot duplicate this database without duplicating also its content. And normally I want to duplicate databases to reuse some of those filters that I'm using. This just can be done with linked databases. So for example, if I duplicate this task database, I'm going to have all the tasks duplicated, but if I come here and I duplicate this linked database, I'm not gonna duplicate any of the data. I'm just gonna duplicate the filters, the source, the views and everything. So I find that much more useful. And now the third reason why I like to use a backlog is because it forced me to just use linked databases along my whole system. And as you've been following me for some time, you know that I like that every linked database has one purpose only. And this means, for example, in this case, the purpose of this linked database is just to show me what I have pending to do today. So try that every linked database that you use have just one purpose. As a very illustrative example of this, I have here my content machine, which basically I have separated in these steps. If you are interested in knowing a little bit more in depth, you can find here my full system and you can see that everything is a linked database to my YouTube videos database, but I am just displaying what I need to be looking at each part of the process, but everything is linked to the same database. Now, my third tip is going to be to have an HQ page or a start here page. 
And the reasons are, this helps you organize all your information much better because as you can see, we, here we can have columns, it's much more visually appealing rather than using the sidebar over here. Also, if we are in a deep page within our Notion space, here we can always come back to the HQ page following the breadcrumbs. So you will never get lost within your system. So this is very easy to create. I just released a video the past Friday in which I built a very similar HQ page to this one. Then my fourth tip is going to be to use a pleasing design. As you know, I love Notion because of the flexibility that it gives us to really design our pages how we want. And I think this is really important because this is probably a tool that we are going to be using every day. So let me give you some inspiration on what to do for designing pages better. My first tip here will be to use emojis everywhere. As you can see, this can give a much better feeling of what is in each of the columns. And for example, also if we go to the content machine that I showed before, you can see that everything is preceded by an emoji. Then my second tip for better designing your Notion workspace will be to use toggles for everything. You can see here how clean this view is, but inside of each toggle, there is so much information. And if we have everything without toggles, this view is going to be a mess. But like this, everything is so much cleaner. This is another example from the Portland YouTuber Academy. These are all the notes from the course, and you can see that everything is within toggles. So this is much more clear. Another thing that we can do is to highlight the key text using colors. I like when the background color and the text color is the same. And in order to do that, remember that you can change the color of the background over here, blue background, but the text color you have to choose by selecting the text and changing its color. Because if you try to change the color of the text from here, you will lose the background. And finally, I think it's very aesthetic to use empty callouts. Let me show you. Here in my Knowledge Hub, I have these very minimalistic callouts that I created by selecting here the background color as default background because whenever you create them, they are created like this, but I find that they are much more beautiful when they don't have any background. And my final tip will be to use keyboard shortcuts. Every time that we use the mouse for anything, we are losing time. So it's better to learn few shortcuts that is going to make our experience much faster. The ones that I use the most are Command Alt from one to nine, because like this, we can change the format of our text. If we use Command Alt 1, we use Heading 1, 2, Heading 2, 3, Heading 3, and then 4, we create a checkbox, 5, bullet point, 6, number list, 7, toggle, 8, code, and 9, page. Now, another shortcut that I use is to reuse the formatting that I used previously. What does this mean? If we decide this text to be with gray background, and we create another text. If we select the block and hit Command Shift H, it's going to inherit the previous formatting that we just used. Another shortcut that I use is the Move shortcut, which is Command Shift P. So now, if I want to move this block to whatever page, I just have to select it, and that's it. That is automatically moved to that page. Then, of course, Command Enter whenever we open a new page and we want it to open in a full window, we hit Command Enter and it's open in full window. And finally, Command Shift N. This is going to allow us to create a new window in Notion and we can work in two things at the same time or use one window for reference on the right and the other one in which we are working on the left. So in this video, you have seen a brief view of what my HQ page contains, but I have made a full video in which I show everything that is within it. So if you want to watch this next, just click here and get inspired with it. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it and hasta la próxima.